Okay, I think I figured it out. I think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we are. We're on. We we are live. Yeah, we figured it out. Yeah, it only took ten hours. Yeah. All right, let's start the show. Oh yeah, here we go. Sorry, everybody. Sorry about those technical difficulties. Uh, we're you're gonna see some behind the scenes really quick. Uh, so, really quick, Justin, I'm gonna hit record on Audacity. Oh yes. Whoops. <laughs> I forgot about that. All well, right, I am recording record. now. So one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Right. And I also have the, the chat open. I'm going to try to look at that while we're recording. Okay, uh, cool. But I have the, what do you call it? I have the audio on that muted because I don't want to hear like the, the lag between what I'm seeing and whatnot. So here we go. All right, guys. Sorry about that again. It's working. It's working. <laughs> Finally. Right. Right. Well, now we know for next time, though, at least. So, if anything. Yeah. Shout out to live action Star Wars. They do it way better than us. Yeah. Ruff is much smarter than me and Justin. What's <laughs> up, right. Jorfie? Sorry, sorry, everybody. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right. All right. Welcome to the Whole Maneuver Podcast, part of the Geek So to Speak Network. I'm Mark. And I'm Vactor. We're two hardworking dads trying to immerse ourselves in Star Wars and fit it into our very busy lives. If this is your first time listening, this short-form Star Wars podcast will share our thoughts on different topics from a galaxy far, far away. Hey, Vactor, why does Princess Leia's hair... Or who does Princess Leia's hair? <laughs> I don't know. Who does Princess Leia's hair? She's always got nice one, nice buns. Who does her hair? <laughs> Darth Braider. Hi oh Oh yeah. Uh yeah. So sorry if I'm a bit uh laggy or choppy on my side. My internet out in the sticks is kind of, you know, laggy and choppy, but it is <laughs> it is what it is. I'm sorry guys. Uh but yeah, so today we are recording this episode on Star Wars parentheses marketing day uh may the 4th yeah this will be releasing in its edited podcast form on revenge of the fifth because this is the may so yeah. this week uh actually this morning uh i haven't watched it yet i know Bactor. i don't think Bactor has watched it yet either is the the new trailer for obi-wan kenobi and i actually waited to watch this until uh, us recording right now, because I wanted this to be my first impression of watching it. Oh, yeah. So this might not be super entertaining because I don't know. We're probably not going to show the trailer while we're watching it so that we don't get this stream taken down off of YouTube. <laughs> but uh, let me know when you have it loaded up on your side, Vector, and then I will hit play on my side. Okay, I've got it ready to go. All right, so three, two, one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Man, these Inquisitors are looking so good. They're looking like Justin Jorfee. Woo! Yeah. Oh, Ooh. damn. Uncle Owen Burn. Yeah. 
Oh, nice. Yeah. Ooh, that looked like Rise of the Resistance. Woo! Oh, I just saw Kumal. Yeah. Oh, they're putting together Lego Vader. Oh, dang. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, dang. That was a red lace wrist tag. <laughs> Very well, nice. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. That's that. That's our first reaction. Uh, when we have uh, w- one of our guests here in the, the chat on uh, in the next episode, we're probably going to go into this trailer a lot more in depth than that one. Uh, Cause that's going to be our, our production our production predictions for her, uh, the whole <laughs> like season of Obi-Wan. Also, if you guys uh, can see, for those of you watching on YouTube right now on our stream, you can see Vector and I are wearing our, our sweet hold maneuver shirts with our logo designed by Mr. Ralph Apple himself of live action Star Wars. Thanks Ralph. Yeah. Ralph's awesome. Both, both people in the chat right now are awesome because thank you to you are the only ones in there, but we appreciate you for watching. Uh, so uh, kind of going with the Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer news, uh, Segueing there to the Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, has landed its first, uh, well, the person that's going to be scoring the, li- the live action Star Wars project, not to be confused with Ralph podcast, but <laughs> Natalie Holt, who did the music for the Marvel series Loki, is going to be coming on to do the, the overall score for the show. We know that John Williams is nice. doing the, the theme for the show, but she's going to be coming on and doing all of the score for each episode. So I'm pretty excited about that. I thought Loki had one of the best uh, scores of the new Disney plus series. So I'm very excited about what she's going to do for her part in doing the musical score for the show. How about you? Yeah, I can't wait. Nice. And then today, uh, like we said, is the, uh, not, so much Star Wars Day as far as being anything significant, uh, other than you know, you know, May the Fourth be with you. So it sounds like you have a list when you're saying May the Fourth be with you. <laughs> uh, but today is kind of like a Star Wars marketing day where uh, they do a yes. whole bunch of tie-ins as far as like you know they release that trailer for Obi Wan today, and then there's usually a whole bunch of deals on different Star Wars products. Hasbro Pulse released like a whole bunch of stuff today as far as like what they're going to be releasing they have that darth vader helmet coming out that i'm pretty sure vector is going to be picking up he's got if you guys are watching the video you can see the the uh spider-man helmet there in the background i got my Mm. own i I think mine's a little bit further off screen it's like right here uh we both have two bulbous of heads so that kind of hurts put (laughs) put those on (laughs) Uh, but hopefully maybe the Vader one will fit you better when that one comes out. Cause I know your wife's probably going to want to get that. Uh, some of the, the figures look pretty cool too. The, they had the Ahsoka, uh, clone trooper, uh, figures. Those look pretty nice. Did you see any of the mm. stuff, uh, that they announced today that you'd want to pick up besides the helmet? No, the, the helmet is the number one thing. I think all the figures are good, but that helmet is the one that immediately caught my eye. Yeah. And, the other thing that was released on Disney Plus today was a new Disney Gallery episode for yeah. the Book of Boba Fett. Uh, I know I'm a big fan of that. I know Vatra's a big fan of that. Uh, our buddy uh, Hal Hickel is in the some of the ones for The Mandalorian. So I actually don't know if he worked at all on the Book of Boba Fett. So Ooh. yeah, this will be a good. Will sh- yeah, maybe he'll show up yeah. in these two. Maybe he won't. But I always like seeing him show up in those. I'm always like, come on, John Favreau, let hell talk. I want to hear hell talk. You talk enough. <laughs> I'm but, the same way. Hell rules. Yeah, he does. Uh, and then some uh, StarWars.com posted some stuff for the ways that you could celebrate May the 4th. They had stuff where you could make themed snacks. Uh, they had like this little like rice cake that kind of looked like Wicket, uh, like wearing his little beanie. 
Uh, it's made out of that looks pretty funny. And yeah. A little bit tasty. Uh, they have the the new comic book that came out today. Uh, so you got you got the Obi Wan trailer, but then you got the new Obi Wan comic book that came out. That's kind of going through yes. his lifetime. It's gonna. Now you said this is a, an ongoing series. Did you, did you talk about this on your comics podcast? We love comics. No, unfortunately, because of how crazy the scheduling was this week, I didn't get a chance to read or talk about any of the new books because we recorded oh, before they came out. So I will be checking this one out, though. This one um, is highly – it's it's at the top of my list about books to read. Actually, I was talking to jo- Jorfi, our buddy Jorfi as well, and he's going to be picking this one up too. Nice. You're just not thinking fourth dimensionally. If you, if you recorded yesterday, you could have done it today. But yesterday, <laughs> but yeah, I'm. I, I I'm got something in the works. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put some stuff together. Yeah, just go get that flux capacitor. Uh, but or you know you go go in the world between worlds like like Ezra, not to be confused with other Ezras that we know. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I you said it's ongoing though, so I don't. I because I usually wait for like the trade paperback, so I might have to wait for like a volume one trade paperback for this because I don't like getting like big stacks of like issue issue by issue with these. Uh, But the, the next thing from there, uh, we already talked about the Star Wars gallery book of Boba Fett. Uh, You and I play a little bit of Fortnite. You play Fortnite more often than I do. My son plays it way more often (laughs) than both of us. Our our buddy Shoff and our friend of the show Songer uh, also play a lot of Fortnite and particularly Songer. (laughs) Uh, but they brought Star Actually, Wars we'll back. be hearing from Shaw a little bit later on in the show. Yeah, spoilers. Uh, but yeah, they brought Fortnite back to, or no, they yeah they brought Star Wars back back to Fortnite. So <laughs> I I remember uh, my son played this back when they had the the lightsabers in there originally back when uh, Rise of Skywalker came out, and that was kind of how where they first announced. In a, in a weird kind of way that Palpatine was coming back. Like the whole broadcast that they talk about in the movie, that broadcast happened in Fortnite, I remember, because I remember my son playing that during that. Oh. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, I am definitely going to play some. I'm going to try to play some tonight because I want to get some lightsabers because that's always the most yeah. fun part. Are you going to pick up any of the the skins that they're adding back into it? Like a, you got uh, Black K, or you can get Kylo Ren again, or Finn or Ray. I'll get. Actually, I, I didn't get a chance to get Black K when he came around the first time, and Kylo Ren is one of my favorite costumes in all of Star Wars. So I probably will pick up Kylo Ren. Yeah, I might get that one too. But I'd prefer if they had maybe like a alter alternate skin for. Uh, Kylo Ren, that was Matt, the radar technician. <laughs> ah, now that would be funny. Yeah. But so that that's just some of the special stuff that they did for today for uh, May the 4th. Now, there was also some news announced for the Star Wars celebration that's going to be happening uh, around Memorial Day weekend uh, for the panels. Did you want to share some of that news, Mr. Vector? Oh, yeah. So... Um, I w- would really like to be attending Star Wars Celebration, but I will not be attending this year. Um, they've got okay. a plethora of things going on. Lucasfilm's Studio Showcase. Um, we've got Attack of the Chords, the music of Episode 2 with David W. Collins, which I would love to attend that panel specifically. Um I love David Collins, all of his stuff that he did on the Star Wars show and his podcast. Um, he's really like an expert in both Star Wars and sound design. So I love anything that he does. Lucasfilm Publishing has stories from a galaxy far, far away. Ian McDermott, an audience with the Emperor, who I saw at uh, San Francisco Comic Con. And he did not seem like a very nice guy, but I didn't get to meet him. He's also charging too much. Star Wars maybe he's friends with uh, oh, I was going to say maybe oh, he's friends with uh, Billy D. Williams. Ooh, <laughs> who Mark did not have a good time with. <laughs> um, 
Star Wars Collectibles, Update with Lucasfilm's Brian Merton, The High Republic. I'd like to attend that one for Light and Life. And then we've got Light and Magic, The Summer of Lego Star Wars, Lucasfilm publishing another one behind the page, An Attack of the Clones 20th Anniversary Celebration, my least favorite Star Wars film, uh, merchandise with Disney Parks and Shop Disney. And they've got a ton of stuff here. Hasbro has a panel. Um, man, I would love to attend this one. 35 years of Star Tours with D23. Oh, we just had our Star Tours episode. Yes. So, yeah, there is a ton of great stuff. Um, and I think the highlight for me would probably be the Mando Plus, a conversation with John Favreau and Dave Filoni. That would probably be my favorite. Very cool. Now, the the other yeah. thing, what we were just talking about Fortnite, but what I would like to see as one of the skins in there would be Starkiller from Force Unleashed. Just because they've, they've had other yes, characters that, that have been in other video games. So I think that'd be cool if uh, they I would for added sure that pick that there. one up. Yeah, and the reason I, I bring sure that, up, that one up, yeah, uh, the reason I was bringing that up is that the Star Wars Force Unleashed is going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch pretty soon, um, and that's pretty exciting. I know our, our buddy, uh, who I call affectionately uh, Canadian Justin, uh, <laughs> has been has been playing some Force Unleashed recently as well. Uh, you and I were talking about this nice. a little bit earlier today in our our hold on maneuver uh, Discord chat. Uh, we were talking about where we'd like to see Star Killer actually kind of made canon again to hmm. to the stories instead of just being legends again. I really liked I like it said to you I really liked how his like family crest uh, was what was kind of like the basis and uh, influence on the the symbol uh, yeah. the Rebel Alliance symbol. So I think that'd be pretty cool. Now, are you going to be picking this up for the Nintendo Switch at all, or do you think you might not? Yeah, probably not for Switch. Um, that This is one that I probably want to just play on a big screen and not portable. Yeah. I tried to play that Republic Commando on switch and it was the same kind of thing where I was like, man, I kind of want this on a big screen sitting down on my couch and playing it versus taking it on the go with me. I don't think everything translates well to taking it on the go. And that's what the steam deck is also trying to do is uh, take every game with you on the go. But right. sometimes there's just too many compromises. So I don't think I'll be getting this one on the switch. <laughs> yeah. I, this was on sale a while back on the, the PlayStation Store, so I bought that. So I've been playing that on the PS5 every once in a while. It looks pretty good on there. And it, it's nice. fun just to play back through that game just because of how kind of like hack and slash it is, just beating the crap yeah. out of everything with a lightsaber. I was a huge... Yeah. Yeah. Grabbing the... I was a huge fan like throwing off ledges. Out. So that was, that's yeah. always fun doing that. But speaking of Star Wars video games and... Uh, doing stuff as a Jedi or a bad guy. Uh, the Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order sequel uh, is going to be coming only to the current generation consoles, so like PlayStation 5, uh, the Xbox Series X slash S. Uh, now, we already know that I haven't finished the first game, uh, but I will, I will definitely pick this up when it comes out. I know that that Mr. Vector will be picking it up too. So are you excited about this coming out only to the, the current generation, like PS five and whatnot? Yeah, I think, you know, we're in the middle, we're recent on the new generation or the current gen. So it's not too far away from where the PC is at this moment. So I'm fine with it being current gen only right now. Yeah. I, so I'm pretty excited about that, but that's just kind of a little bit of news with that, just so that it's just becoming under the current gen systems. Uh, and then uh, my buddy Stanford, who I do animation fascination with, he just joined our our live stream. So hello, Stanford. Uh, and hello, segue hello there. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, Segwaying from that, uh, Luke Skywalker's Lego Star Wars Ultimate Collector Series Land Speeder is going to be coming out pretty soon. And this looks pretty cool. Uh, Ooh. This kind of goes along with what, what we're talking about this episode with the, the Lego Star Wars game. It's both Lego and yeah. Star Wars. And this looks cool. This would be, would be nice. And it's, something nice to like. 
Yeah, to have like on your shelf. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely, and it's in the game too. Yeah, and yes, yeah, so I'd like to get more stuff like this. I I just uh, bought the DeLorean that they did the the newer DeLorean, so might have might have to get this eventually. And yeah, yeah I, the, I'm a fan of these type of statues that they do where you can build it and then you can display yeah. it. Like I like that. Yeah, it's definitely like the like the the more like uh, adult collector side of of Lego, too. right? So yeah, I'm I'm excited for that. I know that you are as well. So maybe maybe one or both of us will be picking that up for our, our collections within this year. Maybe. And then also coming up the this Sunday uh, for all the the mothers in the galaxy, uh, StarWars.com also released a Mother's Day gift guide for uh, May eighth. And on that day, you can get a whole bunch of stuff. They got uh, Leia, uh, like planners and what, as well as a whole bunch of Best Mom in the Galaxy t-shirts. There's the new book, Star Wars Queen's Hope. And then, uh, like we were just talking about, there's uh, the Lego Star Wars Death Star Trash Compactor Diorama that came out recently. Uh, There's a pretty sweet porcelain Ahsoka Tano statue, which... Actually, I might want to get that. That looks pretty cool. Ooh-wee. You see that? Yeah. yeah. And then they got a whole bunch of Grogu bucket hats, Grogu Mother's Day pop-up cards, and then just just a whole bunch of stuff. So if if you got a mom or you're married <laughs> to a mother and you want to get her some cool Star Wars stuff for Mother's Day, uh, just check out StarWars.com for their Mother's Day gift guide. Even if you were but created for, by the midi chlorians, you can still, yeah. yeah. Uh, but for there, we're gonna segue over into our main topic for the week, which is about the Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga video game that came out recently, just a little under a month ago on April fifth. So I'm gonna let Vactor play our first listener review, which is from our buddy Shaw. Uh, it's about, well, I'll just let you listen to it. Aw, yeah. Welcome back to another episode of Shaw Loves Lego, the show where I love Lego and you should too. On this episode, I'll be the Lego stud sharing my thoughts on Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. Spoiler alert, it rocks my socks. It's safe to say that of the people I know in this world, there is no bigger Lego maniac I know than myself. And whether I'm building Lego sets or playing Lego video games, I know I'm going to have a good time. Lego is probably my favorite hobby. It's better than reading comics or movies or TV shows. It's even better than playing video games. Unless the video game is Lego related. I've played a lot of Lego video games and absolutely remember with fondness the first iteration of Lego Star Wars games with mumbles galore. My absolute favorite Lego video game hasn't changed since the game came out. Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2 with Kang, the Conqueror, as the baddie. I love that game and did not put the dang thing down until I hundreded it. That being said, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is a close second. Quick shout out to Vactor for getting the game for me for my birthday. Thank you, sir. I'm a little over halfway through the game, and when I first started playing it, I wasn't sure how I felt. First off, the space flight controls felt a little wonky, uh, but that was solved with some Y-axis inversion. Seriously, why even default flight controls to a non-inverted Y-axis? I don't get it. Then the camera felt too close to the character, and that Uh, really changed the gameplay style for me. I've since gotten used to it, but it was definitely an adjustment from the semi-static camera of games past. I absolutely love the sheer amount of characters you can play as, but the character swapping mechanics leave a lot to be desired. It's very easy to fat finger it and screw up your selection, ending up with some battle droid when all you really want is Oscar Isaac in an ugly Christmas sweater. My only other gripe with the game is some of the character type specific skills, namely the scavenger skill. I chose to start on episode one and work my way through all three trilogies, but the scavenger skill can't be unlocked until you play episode seven, 
which means there's so many levels in the prequel and main trilogy that I can't 100 until I get to episode seven. That is bullshit. So all, uh, all of those things aside, this game is so fun and funny. I was worried that they would stick us with retreaded jokes from prior games, but the approach feels fresh and helps to fill in the gaps in the story. I also love that levels don't just start with a button. You have to get from one point to another on the map in order to activate levels. It just helps with the immersion. All in all, this game is a must have for any Star Wars or Lego fan. It makes me wish I had some really rich friends to buy me the $800 Lego USC <laughs> Millennium Falcon. Because I need that shiz. <laughs> Lastly, the only character combo that matters in this game is Mando with Grogu. And it doesn't matter who else. <laughs> Grogu is a treasure and must be protected at all costs. Grogu, I'm never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. <laughs> Y'all just been Lego brick rolled. Anyway, Lego rules and Mega Bloks drools. Back to you, Vactor and Vibbert. Oh, and, uh, Live long and prosper. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Shoff. Shoff, for those who don't know, is my co-host on the Technological Podcast, which is our Star Trek podcast on the Geek So To Speak Network. So he's over in, in the other galaxy, uh, but he decided to dip his toe in our Star Wars universe for this episode. Yeah. So thank you very much for that voicemail, Shoff. And Mark's son also yeah. had a review of Lego Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, my son, Patrick, he wanted to give a review too, but he didn't want to go through the whole rigmarole of recording an audio review like our buddy Shaft did. So he wrote it down and I'm going to read it for you. And his voice pretty much sounds like mine anyway. So just picture me as a 16 year old boy. That sounded weirder than it was supposed to. <laughs> uh, Patrick's review starts as Skywalker Saga is a huge upgrade compared to the complete saga. Combat systems, the exploration, everything. Each level has expanded parts leading up into the actual level, which is very nice. Each episode has about five missions, which were with all the stuff in between, and you can change the era at any time. So if you wanted, you could be training with Luke on Octo to fighting uh, Anakin on Mustafar to blowing up the Death Star, and that is pretty sick. There's been some complaints from certain platforms uh, about bugs not allowing to continue the story, but when I played, I had no issues, which I'm glad about. I'd say my only complaints about the game uh, would be no character customization, lack of voice acting in the DLC packs, and how Kijimi is a useless planet you can't do anything on. <laughs> and that that is Patrick's review of Lego Style Wars to the Skywalker Saga. Nice. Thanks, Patrick. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks, my, my little dude, who's actually not little. He's like 6'4 now, so he's probably taller than Peter Mayhew was. All right. Oh, dang. <laughs> yeah. But from there, I'm going to lend it over to Vactor first to hear his thoughts on what he thought of playing the game. And first... Did you complete the game yet, or how far are you into the game? Yeah, I unfortunately have not had a whole lot of free time, so I have not completed it yet. And I started on the original trilogy, um, episode four, because that's how they were released. That's how it should be. And that's how I'm going to show my son when he watches them for the very first time. But um, I only got a chance to play episode four. I haven't gotten any further than that yet, but... I am enjoying it. Um, I was a big fan of the Lego Star Wars games when they first came out. And I always liked the little simlish language that they did. And then when they trans over to transitioned over to the voice acting, I was like, oh, that's interesting. It doesn't make it as unique as the, the little mumbles. Um, but, hey, that's kind of cool. This one I think is interesting because they got, like, really good voice actors including Matthew Wood doing Grievous um, and I'm blanking on his name, like uh, Sam Witwer doing the yes. emperor and they got a whole bunch of other great voice actors in the game. But when I know the real actors, you know, I know the actual sounds of the, the movie sounds, it kind of feels I, I'm 
kind of torn because it's like half of me loves Sam Witwer and, and the, the new voice acting. But then the other half of me is like, Oh, I want the original. I want the, the original sounds, the original voices um, from all of these movies. So I'm kind of torn on that, but the graphics on it are great. You know, perfect update to all of the Lego games. This is, you can definitely tell this one came out in 2022 versus the other, you know, 2005 and, and onward. So I really like the environments. Um, it's that same great, Lego gameplay where you don't have to specifically um, it doesn't take your focus away, I should say. And I like all of the different corridors that you go down and it's almost like you're seeing it from a different angle. You're seeing the same stories from the movies, but you're going down a different corridor and you didn't get to see that in the movie. So I kind of like that as well, because after, you know, all of us, we're doing a Star Wars podcast, so I think all of us can recite the movies back and forth. You know, we could quote all of the lines. We know everything back and forward, backwards and forwards, I should say. And after a while, you know, you want something new and looking at the same stuff that we loved as kids, but from a different angle, I think is a really nice addition to the video game and it's not the same game as well. So the, when the games came out and they were doing the exact same storylines of the, the movies, it's something that I've enjoyed um, all around. And I'm looking forward to all the DLC packs when those come out. But like I said, it's that same great Lego humor and styling of it, um, but kind of just updated and getting the, Rise of Skywalker, you know, the movie that we did not get before Last Jedi, getting a chance to see all of those um, put it together for me. So I think they did a really good job with the Skywalker saga. Um, looking forward to continuing my playthrough of it. Um, like I said, I just haven't had enough, a lot of time between doing uh, 10,000 podcasts, but and being, and I'm enjoying being what, I, what I've played of it so far. Yeah, that yeah. too. <laughs> Raising my son and uh, also trying to go to work as well. But what did you think about your time with Lego Star Wars? Well, surprise, surprise. I haven't beaten the game either. Uh, <laughs> we, all, we all know how much time Mr. Mark Weber gets to play video games. Uh, but <laughs> I I started with the prequel, so it's kind of actually nice that, that you started with the original trilogy and I started with the prequels, so that way we kind of have a little bit of uh, differing views on what we have for right. experience. So yeah, much like uh, Shoff, I was going to try to do it one through nine um, chronologically, storyline wise. I wanted to do it that way. Uh, but what I've been playing so far, I've been really enjoying. Um, I'm just about to uh, the, like the pod race on, on Mos Espa. So I'm having, I'm having fun playing that. It's, it's familiar to the point uh, where, you know, it's like just, I just, I'm just running around all over the place, smacking stuff with my lightsaber, um, getting getting all the, <laughs> the Lego studs that I can to collect those to get the that true Jedi uh, completionist uh, goal in each episode. Uh, but like you're saying, we we got so used to like the mumble, like the Lego mumble voices uh, that when they started yeah. doing these like actual voice acting for it, it was kind of. Um, like you said, with knowing who does the voice, it's almost it's similar to that uh, that certain type of animation where it's like the uncanny valley uh, for vi like your sight. It's almost like an uncanny valley for uh, your ear for some of these because you get so used to a particular uh, cadence or kind of voice for that character that yeah, when a right. new person is putting their own take on it, sometimes. Now, sometimes it might be better, but you got so used to that, that other version of it that you're like, wait, that, that sounds weird, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's really fun. I, I always like the little like Lego jokes that they put that put in there. There's a ton of little Easter eggs as far as in the game to like, they, they have references to, to everything from like the Simpsons to better call Saul to <laughs> Like, like every, uh, there's a South Park reference on, on one of the Endor uh, uh, levels. That's like a reference to the, like the Chewbacca, like excuse from one of the trials in, in South Park, 
But I think it's funny how they like hide like all these little like pop culture Easter eggs in the show or not the show, but the the game. And uh, like we were saying, there's space combat in it now. It's uh, episodes one through nine. Uh, if, if you're my son, it takes you about 12 hours to complete it. If you're me, it takes about <laughs> uh, probably two years. Uh, it's, <laughs> these these games are, are fun from if you're like a four-year-old kid just trying to figure out what the controllers do to if you're a, like a 95-year-old person trying to figure out what the controller does <laughs> right. or if you're anywhere in between. Uh, but... I don't know if you guys are going to talk about it anymore on over on the sandbox gamers at all. Cause I, I know probably only you are like the, probably the only one that played it. So I'm outside of that. Yeah. I'm not sure how much more you talk about it. I know you did a little, a little think, bit, a few episodes ago. Yeah. When it first came out, I talked about it a little bit. When I beat it, I'll probably do a little wrap up of my overall thoughts on it. Uh, but yeah, this yeah. right here is my introductory thoughts uh having played the first trilogy or episode four at least having started the first trilogy um yeah so yeah i will report back on both the sandbox gamers and the hold on maneuver yeah um like you said uh i'm just kind of to round out our review of this uh talking about the dlc a little bit uh they do have so far they have uh, about seven dlc packs that were announced for it uh, there's one that is for uh, The Mandalorian Season 1, uh, as well as Solo, A Star Wars Story. Uh, there's classic characters, a trooper pack, a rogue one, uh, and Mandalorian Season 2, and a bad patch. A bad batch. Ooh, I want that uh, set. bad So batch. you can get anywhere yeah. from Grogu. Uh, he's not playable, but he's with uh, Din Djarin to, like, uh, uh, you can be Cara Dune and just keep jumping off a cliff. Uh, or you can be a young Chewbacca huh. or a young Lando, so you can be Donald Glover walking around. Um, so th hey. there's a whole bunch of different people, in, like Jin Erso, uh, Cassian Andor. Uh, you can slap people as K2SO and say there's a fresh one if you mouth off again. So, <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, and then you can you can be Director Krennic, too, and you can be like, this close to greatness. Uh, but... I'm I'm excited about these. They had uh, two character packs that just released today on May the fourth. That was the trooper pack, and then the season two Mandalorian ones. They had uh, Ahsoka, uh, Boba Fett, Bo-Katan, Fennec Shand, and Moff Gideon, and then the Bad Batch one uh, features all of our our Ninja Turtle, but as clones. So, yeah. yeah. Did you have anything else you wanted to say about uh, Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga as we're wrapping up a Vector? Uh, I just really enjoy the Lego gameplay, and if you have liked any of the previous Lego games, you you know what you're in for, and you'll like this one. I have to say I agree. Uh, but that is going to do it for yeah. our review this week. Uh, you guys can leave us a review on the podcast catcher of your choice. If you're watching us right now on YouTube, you can click that little thumb button that's either beneath me or underneath Factor. And if you're not already subscribed, you can make sure... That, that subscribe button is no longer red, but gray. And then you click that bell thing. You know, you know the whole the whole spiel if you if you watch enough YouTube videos or listen to enough podcasts. Just, just do all that stuff. If you if you like us, yeah. if you like you, uh, just do it. Please. Uh, you can follow the show on social media where on all the, the where all the fellow kids hang out, you know, Twitter at Holdapod, Instagram at Holdapod, uh, Facebook at Hold a pod, YouTube. Uh, we still need a whole bunch of more subscribers before we can get that custom link, but we put the, if, well, or if you're watching this on YouTube, you already found us, so congratulations. But if you're listening to this <laughs> on uh, your podcast, Catcher of Your Choice, uh, it's there in the show notes to catch us on YouTube. So you can watch one of these uh, video streams in the future. Uh, but you can follow us individually on social media as well, on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Mark Bittert. So that's my first name, M-A-R-C, and then my last name, Vibbert, V like Virginia, I-B-B-E-R-T, and then Vactor, where can they find you? I'm just Vactor, V-A-C-T-O-R. Oh, yeah. And you can email us at holopod at gmail.com. You can also, if you're listening to us on Anchor, uh, you can leave us a voicemail, and you can actually play that on the show 
very similar to how we played Shaw's uh, review of Lego Star Wars earlier. And then you can hear your own voice on the podcast, just like this. Uh, but you can also check yeah. out the other shows on the Geek So To Speak podcast network. They all star Mr. Trent Baxter. Uh, they got We Love Comics, which is a surprise comic book podcast. Uh, the Sandbox Gamers, which is a video game podcast. Technological, which is a Star Trek podcast, and then the mothership of all of these podcasts is Geek So To Speak, which is the Geek News podcast covers uh, most of the geek news around the internet. Uh, so, as always, we are grateful to George Lucas for creating the Star Wars universe. Thank the maker! Oh, that was exactly 40 minutes. Yeah.